Before one can understand diseases and disorders of the eye or reasons for loss of vision, it's important to have a good understanding of the basic anatomy of the eye. As we look at this eye, it's important to remember that this is actually a three-dimensional structure. In addition to its size being identified by its um, external markings or the, that which we can see that is visible to us, it's important to remember that there is a third dimension to this structure. That dimension is its thickness or its depth, within that which are a number of other structures or elements, the health of which are all important for the process of vision. As we examine the eye from the outside, we can see several things. The outer wall of the eye, which is white in color, is called the sclera. And the sclera is covered by a thin, clear membrane that has blood vessels associated with it called the conjunctiva. An extension of the sclera across the central part of the eye is called the cornea. And this par portion of the eye is a clear structure. We consider the cornea a clear outer window of the eye. When we look through the cornea, we can actually see some of the internal structures of the front portion or anterior chamber of the eye. Specifically, we can see the iris, uh, which is the colored portion of the eye. In this example, the iris is blue in color. And in the center of that iris is a hole, otherwise known as the pupil. And in this instance, the pupil is round in shape and typically the pupil will have a black color appearance to it. When we look through that pupil with specialized instruments, we can start to see uh, other structures in the back part of the eye. Looking at this eye from a different angle, we can see some various things. Uh, as light enters into our eye, it again passes through that clear outer cornea. It then travels through the front chamber of the eye that's filled with a clear fluid called the aqueous humor. After light passes through the anterior chamber, it passes through the pupil, and the next structure that it hits is the lens. The lens uh, is a crystal clear structure that sits right behind the iris, and its uh, function is to focus light rays uh, through the back chamber of the eye onto the retina. This back chamber is filled with a gel called the vitreous, and once light strikes the back wall of the eye, um, it hits the retina, which then generates a signal that will then be carried from the eye by a cable called the optic nerve. Looking at this from a slightly different perspective, again, we can see that light enters the eye by passing through the cornea. It then travels through the front chamber of the eye, through the pupil, and then through the crystal clear lens that sits behind the iris. After light passes through that lens, it is focused onto the retina where an electrical signal is generated that then gets carried to the brain by a cable called the optic nerve. And the brain pieces all the information together, resulting in that which we see, the picture or object that we're looking at. Now, if there's any obstruction to the entrance of light through the eye, whether there's clouding in the cornea or clouding of the fluid in the front chamber of the eye or clouding in the lens, as is in the case of a cataract, light won't be able to penetrate those structures and stimulate the retina in the fashion that needs to happen for vision to occur. We can also see dis diseases or disorders of the retina and the optic nerve, which can result in loss of vision, um, as well as conditions affecting the brain. How do we determine the health of those tissues? Well, it involves um, a thorough examination of the structures of the eye, the veterinarian, in practice, um, has tools available, including lights and lenses uh, that enable uh, the veterinarian to examine into the eye and view all of these structures. In some instances, however, some more sophisticated equipment is required that provide us greater magnification and different light sources that enable us to examine things a bit more critically. These are tools that are typically used by veterinary specialists uh, ophthalmologists who are available to examine the eyes of pets and diagnose and treat various disorders of the eye. To learn more about the anatomy of the eye and various diseases that affect animal eyes, please visit www.vetvine.com.